Welcome to Ground Control. I am working on modifying the thrust angle on my Volantex Ranger G2, but this will apply to a lot of these planes that have these pusher motor setups that just do not have uh, enough of an angle um, on their on their thrust line from the motor to keep from pushing the nose down. So um, if you've watched the uh, initial review of this plane um, you know that uh, the first time I went out and launched it and I hadn't I hadn't flown a plane like this before so um, I was surprised that the first time that I launched it without any flaps and without any up elevator you know trimmed into it that it just the plane just completely nose down into the ground as soon as I let go of it launching it at about 60-70% uh, throttle. It was like I had full down elevator on it. So, and um, you know, tore up the nose a little bit on the first launch. So before I took it out to fly it again, I programmed it with flapperons. I put full, full flaps in it and I put full up trim on the elevator and then launched it and it worked just fine. But I don't want to have to do that. Um, you know, I would rather this thing not have such a bad thrust angle on it. So what I've done is I've gone ahead and I've I've uh, pulled the uh, I've uh, taken the hardware out and disconnected the motor motor mount from the airframe. This motor is a 2212 1400 kV motor, and what I want to do is I have a couple of nylon spacers. Let me show you those. I have a couple of nylon spacers. And these spacers are three millimeter in diameter. So what I'm wanting to do is I'm wanting to put those spacers underneath the mount and give it more of a thrust angle. Now two problems that I run into right off the bat by putting this much angle into the motor um, with these three millimeter spacers is number one, the motor will be rubbing the inside housing of the motor mount. And then number two, the screws which hold the motor mount onto the airframe are only eight millimeters in length. They're two and a half millimeters in diameter and they're only eight millimeters in length. So putting a three millimeter spacer on the bottom, there's just not going to be enough thread there to secure that motor mount back on. So I went through my hardware and I did find some... Um, coarse thread screws very similar to the ones that were in it and these are 11 millimeters long so that will make up for the additional three millimeter spacer that's going to be in the bottom of the mount now the diameter of this screw is a little bit larger diameter this is a three millimeter diameter screw and the one that was in it was a two and a half millimeter diameter screw but I tested this out and I think these screws are going to work just fine so um, that problem is taken care of but the other problem and I'll show you what I plan on doing here and I'll, I'll take a picture of this to put it up on the screen as well and bring it in here a little bit with putting a three millimeter spacer underneath this it's going that's going to make the motor rub the inside edge of this race right here so what i'm going to do is i'm going to take an exacto blade and see if i can carve off some of that far edge inside there and then take a file and then file it down so i can get a at least a millimeter worth of clearance once i put that spacer in and have that motor angled um, where it should be and to, to prevent it from pushing the nose down like it currently does and I think that's gonna I think that's gonna work out fine if I can get that shaved down um, a couple of millimeters give a or a millimeter give a millimeter clearance to the motor so it's not rubbing this inside housing on the far side uh, I think this is I think this modification is gonna work so anyway I'll go ahead and take a picture of what it looks like beforehand and then after I'm finished with it to to uh, show you a close-up of exactly what it looks like before and after I start carving the inside of that motor mount and then we'll be able to get the spacer in there and modify the motor mount ever so slightly and get that thrust angle correct so I'll go ahead and pause it here and then I'll be back once I get that completed 
Okay, so I have cut away the edge of the inside race of that motor mount and then uh, and I used the exacto blade to do that and then I just used a small file to finish it off and so now I should be good to go with this motor not having to worry about the motor rubbing the inside race of this motor mount now okay so now what I'm gonna do oh one other thing that we're gonna need to do with the motor mount we're gonna be kicking the bottom of the motor mount out three millimeters right so what we're gonna have to do is you're gonna have to you're gonna have to bend back the top tabs of the motor mount back toward the tail ever so slightly you know a millimeter and a half on the top two tabs and on the bottom two tabs you're gonna have to bend those forward toward the nose a millimeter and a half. It's been a long time since I worked in trigonometry, but we're kicking out the bottom of the motor mount three millimeters. If we bend the top tabs back uh, one and a half millimeter and the bottom tabs forward one and a half millimeter, we should be able to get the motor mount to fit flush against the top edges of the, the back of the motor mount here. And then the bottom two tabs flush against the three millimeter spacers that we're gonna be putting in there. So I think that will work. So that's one other thing that you're going to need to do before you mount this motor mount, uh, motor and mount back into the aircraft. Okay, so now that I have that done, I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to put my spacer over here on this side. I'm going to get one of my longer screws that I found. Uh, I don't know how much of this you'll be able to see but you'll be able to see the finished product and then we'll take a look at the um, thrust angle the corrected thrust angle once we get this put back together so let me get my screwed over here what I need is I need like three more hands you know all right so let me get this started and just just run that in enough to hold it because we need to put in our other spacer on the other side yeah this is kind of awkward okay Think about that there. let's see okay so let me get this one started and then we're going to take two of our original screws for our top mount I'm sorry, I'm probably blocking everything that you can see. Okay. And one more screw on the other side, and then we'll run them down. Okay, so... Now, let me go ahead and run the top ones down and I'll run the bottom ones down and then we'll see what kind of a thrust angle we have and make sure that our motor mount is completely secure. Okay, so we have our motor mount installed. It's nice and secure. It's not gonna go anywhere. We don't have any rubbing of our motor on the inside of the motor mount, which is fantastic. Now what I wanna do, I could find my pointer that I had here. Let's see. Okay, so now let's take a look at this new thrust angle that we have. Let me see if I can bring this in here a little bit closer up. Okay, so the original motor mount and the prop were parallel to the back side of this motor mount, you know, where the foam ends. So if you look at where the original thrust angle was, you see that it goes right over top of the wing, right? Which explains why it wanted to completely nose down every time I launched it or every time you throttled it up. 
Now, if you look at our new thrust angle where our motor is now, look where that's going. Pull it back a little bit. Um, okay, so look at our new thrust angle. We get it lined up with our motor shaft. It's going to be going right through the center of gravity on the top of that wing, which is exactly where we want it. So I think this is going to work out well, and I know for a fact that this is going to work out a lot better than the stock thrust angle on this plane. So um, now all I need is uh, weather to go out and field test this. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you have a similar issue with one of these pusher planes, and I know a lot of them have this issue, there's a way for you to correct that thrust angle so that this plane flies the way it's supposed to, and you'll be able to launch it without having to worry about it pushing the nose down into the ground as soon as you release the plane. So stay tuned. We will do, be doing the field testing of it. Please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to check out our Patreon site. We have a lot of free content there as well. And I will see you in the air.